think my love for ultra-fast lenses is straightforward. The bokeh, the blurriness. I just want to melt everything else, but to get the subject I want to express in focus. I enjoy to use it at night because I don't need to worry about the weather. I can use all sorts of artificial lights around me. I came across many lenses. They all have very different characters. And you must understand the good and the bad things about them, and to use them properly to capture the mood that I want to present in my photographs. Twelve years ago, I bought a Leica M6, and I started looking at ultra-fast lenses. Noctilux F1 was definitely top of my list until I looked at the price tag. At first, I bought a Noctilux 51.1 because. I read a review saying that it renders very close to Noctilux F1, which isn't true. I know this is very subjective. Well, I was pretty disappointed. But a good thing was, I got a Canon 51.2 LTM, which gave me the dreamy look, and I used it every day for the next nine months, because I only had two lenses, and 50 millimeter is always my first choice. Some of you might know this lens is actually relatively easy to get haze. I saved up for a Noctilux, and I finally got my dream lens. It feels great. I will share my Noctilux story in a separate video, because it is worth more than just one video to describe how much I love it. In 2019, Voigtlander announced Noctilux 51.2. I bought the first few copies available in Hong Kong. And it is an absolutely amazing lens, very solid, sharp at wide open, and I can tell Cosina paid a lot of effort to make it happen. Last year, 2021, Cosina announced the Noctilux 50 millimeter f1.0. Honestly, at first, I wasn't pleased with it with its outlook. It looks chubby, but thanks to a good friend of mine letting me test it, I'm pretty impressed with it. It is not a paid review; it's purely on my own thoughts. My first impression is, I think, this is the sharpest ultra-fast lens in the world right now. Fortlander actually said they used a GA, which is the grinding aspherical lens, and a floating. Mechanism. When aperture open at its widest f 1.0, you can still enjoy a very large bokeh effect, creating mood and style. At the same time, you will notice the extremely sharp image in the in-focus area. I've also included extra images at the end of this video. Don't miss out. I think it's easier to use than a Noctilux because it has a 0.9 meter close focusing distance. A normal Noctilux f1 or 0.95 lens only has one meter at its minimum focusing distance. I think you will like this lens. If you normally use Simulex 50mm f1.4 aspherical lens, or other APO lenses that produce extremely sharp images, and this lens, it has very sharp images on both film and digital performance at wide open. If you have just started using film, or would like to understand more about film photography, I would like you to check out the link below. I'm offering a free film photography course for everyone who is interested to understand more about different film types and tips about using them. Also, I have another course which is the lens inspection guide, with a complete step-by-step -step checklist for you to understand what kind of problems these lenses would have, so that you know what you are paying for. And eventually to help you to save money. 
check out my website if you haven't. There are lens reviews, analog film reviews, and different film photography tips to help everyone improve together. Subscribe to the latest update so that you don't miss out on the next post that I'm going to publish. After sharing my journey with ultrafast lenses in the past, I've tried this foil lens at Nocton for a couple of months now. I can conclude there are three very good things about this lens. The first one is the minimum focusing distance. So normally with an Optilex 0.95 or f1, you can only focus down to one meter, but with this lens, you can focus down to 0.9 meter, which is very good for portraits. And the second good thing about this lens is the weight. It is less heavy than a normal Noctilux f1 or 0.95 or even a Canon 0.95 lens. I'm sure you'll be impressed by its weight. And the third thing is, like what I said, is the sharpness. It is absolutely amazing at wide open. If you stop down, it has 3D pop, and which is very good to use it as an all-rounded lens. However, there are two downsides about this lens. The first one is just a minor one, which I think is the size of the lens. It is much wider than a normal Noctilux, so I find it need to pay much, atten much more attention when I use the lens. And the second downside about this lens is the viewfinder blockage. I find it block almost one third of my viewfinder and I find it difficult to focus and compose sometimes. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you like it, consider giving me a like and share it to your friends and subscribe to my channel and also my website so that you don't miss out any useful content in the future. So the next video is going to be my some street photography in Singapore. So stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.